Oh my god! Oh, oh man. Oh my fucking Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. Today. Today we are watching Better Call Saul season three, episode five. This one is called Chicanery, Chicanery, something like that. Anyway, I'm super excited to get started with this episode. The last episode was amazing as always with this show. If you have not watched the last episode with me, my friends, please click here, go watch that and then come back and join me. I would love to have you join my community here on YouTube and hang out with me in my living room, watch movies, watch TV shows. We have a good time here. We drink, we drink drinks, we drink coffee, water, tea, whatever y'all want to drink. Sometimes we eat snacks. And if you are returning, thank you so much, my friends, for coming back and continuing on this journey of Better Call Saul with me. Um, if you are watching on Patreon, thank you, my patrons. I appreciate you so much. Be prepared for the uncut reaction. <laughs> Get ready for your uncut. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> oh, God, I don't know. And yes, that is right. If you are one of those people who loves uncut, unedited reactions, check out my Patreon. We offer that, we offer early access, we offer Patreon only shows, all the goods. Go check it out, my friends, if you're interested. Link is below. All right, let's get started on this episode. I am super, super, super excited. I honestly cannot wait. Um, I just love this freaking show so much. All right. Lawnmower? Yep, that's what we're starting with, a lawnmower. Oh, Chuck's house, okay. Is this in the past? Found a phone. It looks like it's from 1967, but I think it'll yep. work. Just a second. Yep, in the past. Are you sure this is the right play? I mean, in my experience, the bigger the lie, the harder it can be to dig out. What lie? I know that Rebecca, so we found out a few episodes ago that Rebecca left him instead of, for whatever reason, I thought maybe she had passed away or something. Um, but she left him. So I'm sure eventually we'll find the whole story. But what lie was Jimmy just talking about just here? Fancy. I've never actually cooked a fish like that, where it's like the whole fish. It's always been fillets. How do you even cook a whole fish like that? I guess just in the oven? Rebecca. Oh. Chuck. You look... Love oh, it. that's her. Oh, so okay. To see you. Why does she look older? Two hours ago, I take the sea bass out. No sooner. Oh my gosh, she is older, but resting. Then boom, power goes down. Uh huh. But um, you know, dinner's almost ready, and the fish I would have just had to throw it out. All I have to do is toss it in a pan. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So, is this where we find out? where his condition actually came from. I still can't get over Jimmy being a lawyer. Neither can I. Did you finally get to see Salzburg? Not yet, but next month after Vienna. Fun fact, Salzburg is where Mozart was born and raised. And apparently he hated the place for whatever reason, because I've heard it's beautiful there. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, it's my conductor. They didn't tell um, her? I have to take this. I'm sorry. Oh, wait. Maybe this is what this whole thing is for, so she doesn't suspect. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Got it. Got Just it. go to the bathroom. Make sure that... I'm... 
Yeah, just say you need to go to the bathroom. Yeah, we can do whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, shoot. Sure. Yeah. Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca. What is your problem? It is incredibly bad manners to answer a cell phone in company. Really, Chuck? I'm, I'm, I may have overreacted. That was very abrupt. No, I understand. Thank you for a lovely dinner, but I should be getting back to the hotel. <laughs> He's like, I'm done. You gotta do something. You, you can't let her leave like this. Just tell her what's going on. No, no. She'll understand. She'll... You will not tell her. Okay. So he already had the condition. She obviously doesn't know. Maybe she knows now. I don't know, but. Fishy fish. Oh, kitty. Oh, wait, is he at the vet that Mike goes to? I'm guessing our friend didn't refer you to me to get ichthyological advice. I'm looking for someone with a light touch. Hmm. You got to fit him in a tight space. They're going to have somebody steal the tape. I so not Mike. So. I got you. So who? I figured they would use Mike. Oh, wait, I guess I can't use Mike because they already used him. Mm. Great job, Miss Wexler. Oh. Very refreshing. Believe me, uh, we're happy to get this one off the dock. What was it? Mesa Verde. I hate to be a buzzkill, but there is something you need to hear before we get any deeper in. It's about your former attorney. Charles has been making some very ugly allegations about his brother, Jimmy, with whom I happen to share an office space. Believes Jimmy transposed the address numbers. I wanted to tell you this in the spirit of full disclosure. I thought it was better if you heard it from me. Oh, man. Now, whatever mud Miguel is slinging is not going to screw me out of the best Aww. outside counsel I've ever had. I'm so glad to hear I'm that. I'm glad they're staying with Kim. But, man, I'm just, I'm worried about what happens in the future. Between her and Jimmy, I don't know what it's going to be, but God, don't know. Mr. Alley, I wonder if you'd give us a moment. I'd like to go over something with my colleague. Mm. No problem. I'll be outside when you're ready. Does Howard not want to do it? Mm. Maybe you don't need to testify at all. No, I do. I'm the only person who can adequately explain the context of that tape. It's already a solid case. We have Jimmy's statement from the prosecution to get that tape. Oh, There's God. my testimony and the private eyes. This is about PR. We lost a client. Your brother accessed documents that should have been secured at HHM. I'm not going to risk Jimmy getting, what, a year of suspension? Maybe two? He deserves disbarment. Let justice be done, though the heavens fall. In the matter of James M. McGill, the State Bar intends to prove the following violations of the ethical code. I wonder if Howard wants Jimmy disbarred. Because he hasn't really said his opinion on it, really. Like, deep down, I wonder Committing if he really thinks he deserves to be disbarred. the lawyer's honesty or trustworthiness as a lawyer. We all know Chuck has always not wanted Jimmy to be a lawyer, so that's nothing new. 16-304, unlawfully altering, destroying, or concealing material having potential evidentiary value. I'm Kim Wexler, co-counsel with James McGill. Let's go, Kim. Defense. We don't dispute. He broke into his brother's house, an act he regrets deeply. But there is another side to this story about two brothers whose relationship after years of strain finally broke. Hmm. Interesting. 
bang, bang, bang. Then he kicked down the door. Jimmy was very agitated. He was shouting. Jimmy demanded an audio cassette in Charles's possession. He then broke the cassette into pieces and went on to confront his brother. You testified you've known my client for some time. How did you come to know him? His brother asked to hire him in the mailroom at our firm. And you did? Yes. What was your opinion of him then? This must be intimidating. He was a hard worker. You had a nickname for him, didn't you? For Kim, I mean. Charlie Hustle. Charlie Hustle. Charlie Hustle. He bootstrapped his way into a law degree while working mm -hmm. in your mailroom. Did you consider taking him on as an associate? We did. The partners decided it would be best to avoid the appearance of nepotism. We felt hiring Jimmy might damage morale. Oh, his receptionist is behind him. I just saw her. Your firm Francesca. is Hamlin, Hamlin, and McGill, right? Who's the other Hamlin? My father. Oh. Which partner was the most concerned with nepotism? Charles McGill. When Charles's condition appeared, Jimmy took care of him, didn't he? I believe so. Every single day, without fail, he brought his brother food, supplies, even his favorite newspapers. Isn't that right? He did. Could you speak to the terms of Charles's leave of absence? You know I can't. But you can confirm it was due to mental illness, Objection. correct? Objection. Charles McGill's mental health isn't at issue. Hmm. Why is he looking at Francesca? We need to know whether one lawyer attempted to tamper with another's evidence. Oh. So did they get the tape? Did they change the tape? What are you still doing here? Flight's delayed. How delayed? 40 minutes last I checked. Flight for what? Ah, they have a plan, but I don't know what it is. What are we doing? Stalling. Does that really, like, cover the sound? Just putting your hand like this. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You'd go to such lengths to humiliate me. I did it for Kim! Oh. I guess they didn't get the tape. Your phone, sir? I left it in the car. Did you? What is their game plan? So it obviously wasn't the tape. I thought they were going to try to get the tape. Because that tape cannot bode well for Jimmy. I mean, unless the council or whatever the hell they're called the board just realizes how mental chuck is from that tape calculating i don't know i feel like maybe they're gonna try to have chuck yeah. that Excuse guy me. oh shit <laughs> oh that's funny that is too funny <laughs> that's awesome anyway I was gonna say I feel like they're gonna try to have Chuck freak out in court or something like that or at this hearing guess we'll see we shall see what I would like to hear about is this tape what compelled you to make it I had a suspicion my brother had tampered with documents in a case I was working on my brother whatever else can be said of him can be quite clever did an excellent job of covering his tracks. He can be. Without physical evidence, I felt that a recorded confession, if I could get one, was my best bet. Due respect, but, but you do sound somewhat unhinged on the recording. But yep. what you heard was theater, a performance, play acting. Mr. McGill, I have only one more question for you. Do you hate your brother? What a question. Absolutely not. There's nothing malicious in Jimmy. He has a way of doing the worst things for reasons that sound almost noble. That's actually kind of true, in a way. 
Maybe not the worst things, but... And the way my brother treats the law... Uh, breaks my heart. I'll talk about it after. I wonder what Kim's gonna say. Oh. That's their plan? They're bringing Rebecca in? Uh-oh. Did Jimmy subpoena you? You're not on the witness list. You don't have to testify. No, 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 no. I'm not here for that. Chuck, I wish you told me. I, I can't believe what you've been going through. Oh, yeah. So she didn't know this whole time. You've been I wonder how this is going to play Rebecca. out. I want you to see what's what. It's just not what I expected. <laughs> Is that good or bad? You know, she's gonna hate you when this is over. Uh, yep. <laughs> yep. So then why did he bring her? To throw Chuck off? Oh, or did he bring her to, to comfort Chuck after they do what they're gonna do? What are they gonna do? <clears throat> oh, Jimmy's gonna do it, okay. Well, there's been a lot of fuss about it, but you and I have never really talked about this tape you made. Oh, is this where you claim the tape is spurious? That it's not really your voice? No, that's me on the tape. Mm. It's like the recorder, it must have hurt like hell for you to touch that. There was a degree of discomfort, that's true. Would you like to set the scene for the disciplinary committee? Tell them, you know, what your house looked like at the time of the recording. The Dexter room. I covered most of the walls with foil scrim craft insulation. I also hung a number of space blankets. All right, so shiny insulation and space blankets all over the walls and the ceiling. It was like being inside of a disco ball. How did you know your provocation would work? Why oh, I see. Isn't it because you knew that it was precisely the thing that would worry me so much that I'd say anything to talk you down? Mm-hmm. Because... Because you love him. Oh, the pictures. This is your house, right? Yes. So exposed wires. There's a camp stove. There's a lantern on top of newspapers. You call this normal? I call them adaptations. In order to understand what I was thinking, you need to see Chuck through my eyes. My brother hates me. He lied to me to get me to tell the truth. And I'm telling you, I lied to my brother to make him feel better. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, if you'd had, uh, I don't know, lung cancer, would you have told <laughs> Rebecca then? <laughs> Oh, lung cancer. This illness, what does it feel like? You mentioned it's painful. It is. There's a tightness in my chest, difficulty breathing, and pain. It sounds horrible. Does it hurt right now? There's always some discomfort, yes. Oh, what are they doing? What are they doing? Right, so with the lights out, you don't feel them. If the current's not flowing, no. Got it, got it. So if I had a small battery safe from a watch or something, and I got it close to you, close to your skin, you'd know. I would feel it, yes. Oh, did they put something in his jacket or something? Can you tell us where the nearest source is right now? Jimmy, do you have something in your pocket? Is he catching on? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. My cell phone. From this distance, you should feel it, and you don't, do you? Just as I thought. There's no battery in here. God, Jimmy. Don't you know by now this is real? What do I have to do to prove it to you? I don't know, Chuck. Could you reach into your breast pocket and tell me what's there? Yep, they put something there. Bet 
battery. Can you tell the court what that was? A battery. Mr. Chairman, you please. You recognize that man in back? His name is Huel Babineau. He'll testify he planted this fully charged battery on you over an hour and a half ago. <laughs> and you felt nothing. No, uh, no, 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 uh, no, it's a trick. It has enough to is enough. The fact that the I defendant am not crazy. Yep, they're going to make him freak out. I know he swapped those numbers. I knew it was 1216. I just, I just couldn't prove it. He, he covered his tracks. He got that idiot at the copy shop to lie for it. <laughs> you think this is bad? This, this chicanery? He's done worse. Chicanery, okay. Oh boy. He defecated through a sunroof. And I saved him. And I shouldn't have. He'll never change ever since he was nine. Always the same. Couldn't keep his hands out of the cash drawer. And he gets to be a lawyer? What a sick joke. I should have stopped him when I had the chance. And there it is. And you, you have to stop him. You... I apologize. got carried away oh boy do you have anything else no nothing further Man. All right. That was intense. Alrighty, my friends. That was the end of that episode. Wow. That was pretty intense there. That was, uh, that was intense. Another amazing episode. Let's just get that out of the way. Amazing episode. But, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure, <clears throat> I wasn't sure what Jimmy's plan was or what his and Kim's plan was. I thought, you know, I thought, oh, they're going to get the tape. They're going to destroy the tape or switch the tape or something that didn't happen, which looking back, it's better that they actually didn't mess with the tape, but yeah, they brought the dude back, Huey, uh, which was awesome. I love it. Oh man, I don't even know. Okay. Gotta gather my thoughts, because like a lot happened in that episode, I feel like. How they got Chuck to go crazy or have a freak out or whatever you want to call it was really cool. <laughs> so smart. I knew once Huey like bumped into him, he put something in his coat or whatever. I wasn't sure what it was, but yeah, the battery. It's very interesting. So now the um, hearing, what do you call them? The board, the bar, whatever, council people can see that the condition is All mental. It's all mental. I wonder what they're gonna do. And we all know at this point that Chuck never wanted Jimmy to be a lawyer. So that I already knew. But I don't know. I just, as I said, I think in the last episode, I don't know if it was the last episode or the one before, I was basically talking about I kind of a little bit understand where Chuck is coming from because I know how Jimmy slash Saul is in the future and the things that he does and some of the stuff that Chuck says is like spot on to how Jimmy is in the future so I understand a little bit of that part of where he's coming from with, with 
those observations about his brother. But the fact that just out of spite or out of because he doesn't think Jimmy is good enough or not a good enough person or just that he's better than Jimmy, the fact because of that is the fact that he doesn't want him to be a lawyer, like Jimmy doesn't deserve it because of the stuff that he did in the past is bullshit. That's where I disagree and that's where Jimmy was talking about like my brother hates me kind of thing. And all I know is that Jimmy, which I've also said before, I believe in another episode, Jimmy would never have done what Chuck did. I don't believe he would have done that. Like the whole thing Chuck did with, and, and trying to disbar Chuck, he would never do that. I don't think, or try to put Chuck in jail. Like we can tell, we can tell that, that Jimmy really loves his brother. And so Chuck says that he loves Jimmy. He says that he loves his brother. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Maybe somewhere deep, 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 deep down, he loves his brother because he's his brother. And maybe he feels a responsibility to him as the older brother that he has to love him or something like that. But I feel like Jimmy cares about Chuck way more than Chuck cares about Jimmy. So I will leave it with that. And that is it, my friends. Amazing episode as always. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're watching on Patreon, thank you so much for your support, my friends. I really appreciate it. Thank you also for supporting me on YouTube. Uh, if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe below. Help my channel grow. It helps me. It's free and you'll never miss a video from me and you will join our little community we have here of watching amazing shows with me in my living room and drinking. <laughs> um, anyway, I would love to have you join me, my friends. Um, and yeah, that is it, my friends. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great rest of your day or your night whenever you're watching this. And I will see you for the next episode. Bye friends.